Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Cat Ratings. In this presentation, we'll provide a short introduction to cat electrical safety ratings in the context of common test and measurement instruments, such as multimeters and oscilloscopes. Some electrical test and measurement tasks involve potentially dangerous voltages and currents. Here, dangerous refers both to the risk of damage to the instrument, as well as the risk of operator injury or even death. This risk increases the closer one gets to the voltage source or utility supply. Shorter distances mean lower impedance between the measurement point and the voltage source, and hence the potential for higher currents. Test to measurement instruments normally have a specified maximum input voltage, and this applies not just to multimeters and oscilloscopes, but also to the leads and probes used with these instruments. A very common misconception is that it's safe to use an instrument when the instrument's rated voltage is higher than the expected measured voltage. One reason why this assumption is dangerous is that it ignores the possibility of something called transients. AC mains voltage is normally very sinusoidal with consistent peak and RMS values. Transients are short duration deviations from normal voltage levels. They're usually only tens or hundreds of microseconds long, but during this time, voltage can spike up to several hundred or several thousand volts. There are many causes of transients, such as lightning, faulty contacts, switching in the distribution network, inductive loads, etc. And although very high voltages are dangerous in and of themselves, transients can also lead to an even more dangerous condition, namely arc faults. Arc faults, also called arc flashes or arc blasts, can be caused by extremely high voltage transients, and the higher the voltages, the greater the risk of an arc fault. Arc faults are caused by a sudden release of electrical energy across a high voltage gap due to a breakdown across that gap. This breakdown or bridging may be between different phases or between a phase and ground. The resulting blast or flash contains large amounts of thermal energy, pressure, molten metal, etc., all of which are extremely hazardous to humans. Arc faults can occur spontaneously due to dust, corrosion, etc., but they most often occur when human activity causes contacts to be bridged unintentionally, such as during probing, when tools are dropped, etc. The risk of arc faults can be reduced by using instruments and accessories with appropriate CAT ratings. CAT ratings are a clear and easy way to determine if a measurement instrument and its accessories are suitable, in terms of safety, for a given measurement task. Safe in this context refers to the measuring instrument's ability to withstand a given transient and not become the source of a short and or an arc fault. Another way of saying this is that CAT ratings help answer the question, is it safe to use this instrument in this measurement environment? CAT ratings are defined by IEC 61010-1 and other related or derived standards. And as we'll see later in this presentation, CAT ratings are specified in terms of categories and rated voltages. It's very important to remember that CAT ratings apply to measuring instruments and their accessories, not to devices connected to the power distribution network or parts of the distribution network itself. Meters and probes have CAT ratings, but things like breakers, sockets, and appliances do not. There are four CAT ratings. CAT 1 applies to measurements of devices that are not directly connected to mains power. CAT 2 is needed when measuring devices that are plugged into standard sockets or receptacles. CAT 3 applies to both fixed loads that are directly wired into mains, as well as to power distribution elements such as breaker panels. And CAT 4 applies primarily to the outdoor utility connection. Beyond this is the high voltage portion of the utility network. Note that the higher category numbers indicate closer proximity to the voltage source. In the next portion of this presentation, we'll go through each of these categories in more detail. CAT1 applies to measurements on so-called protected electronic equipment. One meaning of protected is that the measured devices are not directly connected to mains. A common example of this would be a laptop that's powered by an AC to DC adapter or supply. And of course, this would also apply to these same devices when they're running on battery power. Another way in which devices are protected is if they contain their own protection device, such as an internal fuse or breaker. CAT1 generally applies to most electronic devices, 
and these devices typically pose a relatively low risk of danger during measurement. CAT2 applies when making measurements of circuits that are directly connected to a single-phase low-voltage supply or outlet. These outlets are intended for powering common household appliances, portable tools, etc. This category also applies to the devices plugged into these wall outlets or sockets themselves. Note that increasing distance from a voltage source means increased impedance, and thus a lower danger. So CAT2 also applies to outlets that are more than 10 meters from a CAT3 source, or more than 20 meters from a CAT4 source. CAT3 applies to measurements made on indoor distribution circuits, such as on the mains bus, branches, panels, etc. This category also applies to permanently mounted equipment that's directly connected to mains, that is, equipment that's hardwired, not plugged in using a socket and power cord, as we saw for CAT2. Additional examples of CAT3 measurement environments include lighting systems in large buildings, three-phase motors, and any nonlinear or inductive loads which can generate their own transients. The highest category is CAT4, which applies to measurements made at the source of a building's electrical installation. This is sometimes called the origin of installation because it involves the connection between the utility power and the meter, the entrance service panel, as well as the run between the meter and the distribution panel. CAT4 is generally an outdoor measurement and applies to both overhead and underground power lines. It also applies in some special cases, such as for overcurrent protection equipment or for connection points that are low voltage but high energy. In addition to a CAT rating, measuring instruments and accessories will also have a rated voltage. This is the maximum voltage that the instrument can measure, but note that this is a much lower voltage than what the instrument can safely withstand. For example, let's consider an instrument with both a CAT3 rated voltage of 300 volts and a CAT2 rated voltage of 600 volts. Although the instrument can withstand a 4000 volt transient in both cases, it should not be used for CAT3 circuits with an operating voltage of more than 300 volts, or a CAT2 circuit with an operating voltage of more than 600 volts. And, since it does not have a CAT4 rating, it should never be used in a CAT4 environment, regardless of the voltage. When instruments have multiple CAT ratings, the lower CAT rating often has a higher rated voltage, but instruments with a higher CAT rating are usually safer. Let's compare a CAT2 600 volt rated instrument with a CAT3 300 volt rated instrument. The CAT2 device has a higher rated voltage and can safely withstand the same transient voltage as the CAT3 device. But note that the test impedance is different for these two categories. The lower test impedance of the CAT3 device 2 ohms versus 12 ohms means that they can handle both a higher working current and a much higher transient or peak current. The best rule of thumb, therefore, is to first determine the category in which you're working and then choose an instrument with an appropriate voltage rating from that category. This provides the greatest safety for both the instrument and the operator. Most test and measurement instruments and accessories are either CAT2 and or CAT3. This includes digital multimeters, benchtop and portable oscilloscopes, probes, etc. CAT4 is generally found only in some specialty DMMs designed for higher voltage work. Note, however, that an instrument with a given CAT rating can be used in lower CAT environments. For example, a CAT3 rated device can be safely used in a CAT2 or CAT1 environment assuming that the maximum rated voltage is not exceeded. One final thing to note is that CAT ratings apply only for 50 or 60 Hz AC. D rating may apply when instruments are used to measure higher frequency voltages. As mentioned earlier, the probes used with DMMs also have CAT ratings and rated voltages. Generally speaking, the longer the length of exposed metal in a probe tip, the easier it is for an arc to form. Therefore, probes rated for use in higher CAT environments tend to have much less exposed metal. Non-conductive caps are one method used to cover exposed metal, and some DMM probes will have a higher CAT rating when this cap is properly installed. Most oscilloscopes are used in lab or R&D environments on relatively low voltage electronic circuits, 
so a CAT1 or a CAT2 rating is usually sufficient for most oscilloscopes and probes. Examples of CAT3 and CAT4 measurements include power electronic measurements, which normally use differential probes with appropriately higher CAT ratings. Another example is measurements made on distribution or higher voltage systems. This second group of measurements is typically done using handheld oscilloscopes with isolated or floating inputs for additional safety. Regardless of the application, a probe should only be used in the measurement category for which it's specified. So how do we determine CAT ratings? These are normally indicated on the instrument itself, typically near the actual inputs or jacks, but it's sometimes found on the rear of the instrument. Naturally, this information should also be contained in the instrument's specifications or data sheet. For DMM leads or oscilloscope probes, the CAT rating is sometimes printed near either the measurement point or near the instrument connection point. The DMM probe caps mentioned earlier will sometimes also have CAT and rated voltage values printed directly on them. Although the IAC defines CAT ratings, it's important to keep in mind that the IAC does not enforce these standards or require mandatory third-party testing to ensure compliance. Various international electrical safety organizations, such as UL, CSA, VDE, etc., do however certify electrical devices, and this certification usually includes verification of the given CAT rating. Note that although some manufacturers state that they design to a given CAT rating, this does not necessarily mean that an instrument's CAT rating has been independently verified. Let's end with a brief summary. CAT ratings are a simple and clear way to indicate the environment in which a given test and measurement instrument can be safely used. There are four different categories. CAT1 applies to devices that are not directly connected to AC mains power. CAT2 applies primarily to devices that are connected to mains via a plug and outlet whereas CAT3 includes both indoor mains distribution and devices directly wired into mains. CAT4 applies to the, normally outdoor, utility service connection. In addition to a CAT rating, instruments will also have a rated voltage, which may be different if an instrument supports more than one CAT rating. The best way to decide which instruments to use is to first determine the measurement category and then choose an appropriate rated voltage. However, regardless of CAT rating or rated voltage, it's important to remember that no instrument is safe if used improperly. Safety procedures and regulations should be strictly adhered to, and qualified instruction and training are needed before making any measurements on potentially hazardous devices and circuits. This concludes our presentation, Understanding CAT Ratings. If you'd like to learn more about electrical measurements, multimeters, oscilloscopes, or similar topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.